The thing with Godavni in itself was that um, this beach was unlike any other. Uh, the undercurrent that you felt right at the beach was immensely strong. So, so my tactic of staying warm by going into the water just didn't work because suddenly you have these swells that come in from above you and if you, get, if you topple and you go under, the undercurrent is just literally just sweeping you under. And again, uh, I had the issue that I was, I was you know, half blind because I'd lost the contact lens and uh, the sun was coming down really fast and there was no help inside, there was no car, there was no car to be found and obviously I, ha I, didn't ha I didn't carry my phone on me. This must be around 7, I don't really remember what time it was. And then after 10 minutes my husband called me. There was no range, only idea network works there. So my husband called me, he said, where have you dropped Kausto? So I said, we dropped him there where he was supposed to. He was supposed to come to the center. But I think he could not because the sea was very stormy. So he landed earlier. I said, we dropped him where he was supposed. Then he said, did you see him land? I said, yes, we waited till he stood up. He said, OK. I said, but we have dropped him at the far end. So he and our driver, they decided that they'll walk to the other end. I said, fine, Kausar will be any moment at the seashore. But there was no trace. Sun went down, it was dark. There are hardly any people on the beach and the first moment we landed on the beach I saw very big uh, spine bones, they must be of the whale, dead whale on the strewn over the, that beach. The same time there were huge tur turtles dead. So that beach is really scary. The other thing that I was constantly thinking about was that uh, the only circumstance in which Dad wouldn't have, you know, uh, wouldn't have come, come to pick me up is is if something had happened to uh, the safety boat or if Mom was in danger. And at this stage, I was just a little panicky because there was no way that I could get in touch with Mom, and uh, and I was feeling uh, terribly guilty if if something would have happened because I put her on the safety boat. And then in the meanwhile, everyone in the hotel, they had realized something had gone wrong. So those uh, waiters, I don't know who the person was, but he said, oh, that beach, that has leopards on it. And then I was really upset. I said, oh my God, what have we done? So I made a conscious call to, to just get out of this, out of this situation. And uh, I, I analyzed what was around me. And for miles, all I could see was big rock covering the whole beach. So there were two ways that I could get out of it. There was uh, a smaller cluster of rock on, on the right side. And uh, on the left, which was due south, was, uh, this thing was quite a bit of a walk. So, so I tied my kayak up as best I could, uh, took off my wet clothes, just put a life jacket on. And then I start walking uh, to the right, which I thought was a shorter path. And I'd barely made it like 100 paces when I realized that what, for whatever it was worth that my parents were down south and the resort was down south. So if they were to send somebody, however unlikely it was, uh, it would come from down south and they wouldn't see me or the kayak because I'd propped it up so high. Uh, so I turned back around and then charged the other way. And it takes me about um, a whole hour to to walk about six kilometers down this beach face and the only thing guiding me was this lighthouse which I figured was a little further from where the resort was going to be. So uh, after six kilometers of walking half blind I finally reached the spot and uh, there are four people there and I'm, I'm out there and I'm screaming and I'm uh, jumping up on the beach and being like you know I'm here just help me out and then I realized that these four guys are just sitting on a a uh, little push cart and they, they're getting drunk out of their mind. Finally, when, when I got to them, I, I placed a call to um, to Shanjali because I couldn't reach my mom and dad and again I was worried. Then I got a call from uh, some uh, random number but at that point of time I wouldn't care about the fact that I was in a meeting. I just picked up that, I came out of the meeting, I took that number and it was, I could hear Kostu saying something from the other side. I couldn't hear much of him but I was really relaxed that okay fine, he seems fine. But then he said I can't find uh, mom and dad and I hope mom is okay because uh, uh, she was on the boat. So can you just call them and check in? I told him that I've been calling them the whole time. I've 
but I can't get through to them. So he said, yeah, even I can't get through to them. But try calling them continuously. If you get in touch with them, then uh, tell them that uh, I'm safe and uh, I'll uh, call them back. Incidentally, at the same time, uh, two guys on a bike came down uh, to the beach through the small little path and uh, they asked all five of us, you know, have you seen somebody on a white boat? And I was like, I was, I'm the only guy stupid enough to be out here, you know, on a white boat. So that's probably me. So they're like, you know, your parents are worried sick. And I was like, yeah, me too. So, so I jump on, the, uh, jump on the bike and get down to the hotel. I, I get into the hotel and my mom is there and quite visibly she was quite shaken. And you could like literally see that she'd, she'd uh, cried a little. And it, it was just... It was such such a relief that that uh, that she was okay and she was damn relieved that I was there and we hugged it out and and everything was uh, was just brilliant and that's when the hotel owner comes up and uh, he says ki you know we're really glad that that you're okay because that particular stretch of beach where you landed uh, is plagued by leopards so so that was good fun.